Um, and it's interesting, I too start with that. Like if I, I don't know what else to predict, but as a foundational For thing, sure. this seems like the safest starting you know, premise. But then what does that ripple through to in fields like genetics and AI, which you mentioned, autonomous driving, space-related topics? I mean, just ubiquitous computing everywhere. Um, I, I think like AI is going to be incredibly sophisticated in 20 years. Mm. Um, the, when does it first wake up? It, it, like it seems to be accelerating. And the, the tricky thing about predicting things when there's an exponential is that an exponential looks like looks linear close up, um, and and but it's actually it's not linear. So uh, and, and it, AI appears to be accelerating. Um, from what I can see. Um, and do you, for that, do you look at autonomous driving and point AIs, like the Siri-like functionality, as your yeah. guidepost? Um, well, I had sort of a debate about someone like, is AI accelerating or not? And the, the, like, he was saying, well, what's the y-axis? You know, if, you, if it's accelerating, um, you got T on the x-axis, but what's, what's the y-axis? And I said, well, I thought about that, and I think you could have a recursive y-axis so that... Uh, if, if, if at any point in time your, your predictions for AI are coming sooner or later, um, that, that actually would help define whether it's uh, accelerating or not. Whatever that axis was. So you mentioned it's, look it's at the net change. It's a recursive axis. Like, so if, if in any given year, if you, if you find your predictions are, are um, going further out or coming, further, or coming closer in, mm -hmm. that, that actually you know, is, is one way to think of acceleration. Because like, like, otherwise, what's the... What's the qualitative or quantitative measure of, mm -hmm. of AI? Um, I'm saying, like if a given technology is always 20 years in the future. Yeah, if, if it's always 20 years in the future, yeah. it's like more logarithmic. <laughs> um, so does uh, AI seem like it's one of the most fastly accelerating things that you're aware of? Yes. Um, and I, I can certainly say that with, with autonomous driving, where um, you know three years ago, I thought it was 10 years away. Mm -hmm. And then two years ago, I thought it was five years away. Now I think it's three years away or less than three years away. Wow. So, and when you say away, like 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 released to market, available for consumer adoption, as as opposed to prototyping. No, I mean like the, like the technology works. There's a sort of second question as to when regulators would approve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but but like Good luck the, with that. <laughs> the technology works in in a t technology works as a general solution. So like. Gotcha. Autonomous driving, like basically Across the anywhere. So it could be sooner for point things, like highway only, or I mean, highway only. We're already in public beta with this at Tesla, so um, we'll be hopefully in the next several weeks releasing to to all of the cars that have the autopilot hardware, which is all cars built in like roughly the last twelve months. Over here. Hi, my name is Chris LaFleur. Um, I work for Congress for Representative John Congress. A couple days ago, I read about you talking about uh, artificial intelligence and the dangers of it, uh, and how as a, uh, as a businessman, you are totally against regulation and stuff like that, but as a, you know, a human being, you think it's critical that we get ahead of this issue. Yeah. Uh, can you please elaborate on um, like why, uh, what are you seeing that we don't get to see and well, what, as a policymaker, I should be looking to do to sort of, I guess, protect us all? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, um, I think it, it, it is difficult to appreciate just how far um, artificial intelligence has advanced and how far it is advancing. Um, because we have a double exponential at work. Uh, we have an exponential increase in hardware capability. Um, and we have an exponential increase um, in software talent that is going into AI. Um, so whenever you have a double exponential, it's very difficult to predict. Um, People's pre predictions are almost always going to be too conservative in terms of thinking it'll be further out than it is. Um, you know, you start to see things like, um, I don't know if you've seen like the, the videos where you can sort of really quite accurately video simulate uh, someone um, and put words in their mouth that they never spoke. Um, you just Google this, it's really pretty amazing. Um, and then they, they had something called a generative adversarial network. Uh, it had, had two of them, um, 
compete with one another to make the most convincing video. So one would generate the video and then the other one would identify where it, it, it looked fake and, and then that, that would, the other one would fix that and then and they'd go back and forth to the point where you couldn't tell which one was the real, real video and which one was the fake one. Um, and, um, you know, obviously there have been some very public things like the defeat of AlphaGo, or the defeat of Go by AlphaGo, the world's best Go champion. People thought defeating Go was either never or 20 years away. That was, the world's best Go player was defeated. Um, and now that same AlphaGo system can defeat the top 50 players simultaneously with 0% of the chance of them winning. Yeah. And that's one year later. Um, so the degrees of freedom to which artificial intelligence is able to apply itself are in really increasing, I think, by 10 orders of magnitude a year. It's re that's really crazy. Um, so I think, uh, and, and we're starting, and this is on hardware that is really not well suited for neural nets. Um, you know, uh, like a GPU is maybe an order of magnitude better than a CPU, but something, but a, um, a chip that is designed optimally for neural nets is an order of magnitude better than a GPU. Um, and that is, there are a whole bunch of neural net optimized chips coming out um, either late this year or next year. Um, so I think we should, I think, that, you know, the. Part of the role of government is to make sure the public is uh, safe, like to take care of public safety issues. And I think, so I think the right move is to establish some government regulatory agency, which at first is just there to gain insight. So uh, it's not about like shooting from the hip and just putting in rules before anyone knows anything. But you gotta set up the agency, it's gotta gain insight, once that insight is gained, then start applying rules and regulations. Um, we have that for the, you know, for aircraft, the FAA, we've got that for cars, we've got that for, uh, you know, drugs, for food. Um, and I don't think anyone wants the FAA to go away or the FDA to go away or, you know, um, any of those regulatory agencies. Um, I think we just need to make sure people do not cut corners on AI safety. It's gonna be a big deal. It's gonna be a real big deal, um, and it's gonna come on like a like a tidal wave. Now, I have to ask you about a company that you invested in. You, as you said, you make almost no investments outside of SpaceX. Yeah, I'm not Tesla. really an investor. You're not an I, investor. I, I, right. I'm, I don't own any public securities apart from Solar City and Tesla. That's that's amazing. But you did just invest in a company called Vicarious Artificial Intelligence. What is this company? Right. Um, I was I was also an investor in DeepMind uh, before uh, Google acquired it uh, and uh, Vicarious. Um, mostly, I, I sort of want to, it's not from the standpoint of, of actually trying to make any investment return. It's, it's, um, it's really, uh, I'd like to just keep an eye on what's going on with artificial intelligence. I think there's potentially, potentially a dangerous outcome there, and we need to... Dangerous? Potentially, yes. So. I mean, there's been movies about this, you know, like well, Terminator. Yes, <laughs> movies are, even if that's the case, what do you do about it? I mean, what dangers do you see that you can actually do something about? I don't know. Well, wh why did you invest in Vicarious? What exactly does Vicarious do? What do you see it doing down the line? Well, I mean, the, the, the Vicarious refers to it as re recursive uh, cortical networks, essentially uh, emulating the, the human brain. Um, and, um, yeah, so I, I, I think, uh, yeah. So you want to make sure that technology is used for good and not Terminator-like evil? Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I mean, if the, in the movie Terminator, they didn't create AI to... In order, I mean, they didn't expect, uh, you know, uh, some sort of Terminator-like outcome. It's sort of, you know, like that Monty Python thing. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. It's just like, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, but you've got to be careful. So, you, you, yeah, you want to make sure that... But uh, here's the irony. I mean, the man who's responsible for some of the most advanced technology in this country is worried about the advances in technology that you're aware of. I mean, there, what, yeah. I guess that's why I keep asking, what, so what can you do? In other words, this stuff is almost inexorable, isn't it? How, if you see that there's these brain-like developments out there, can you really do anything to stop it? I, I don't know. Well, what should AI be used for? What's its best value? 
you know. But there's some scary outcomes, and we should try to make sure that the outcomes are good and not bad. Um, yeah. Or escape to Mars if there's no other option. The AI will chase us there pretty quickly. Oh, God. <laughs> so what else is in the Elon Musk notebook? What ha what's the latest with the Hyperloop? Uh, I, I understand that there, there are some companies that, have, that are forming to try to make the Hyperloop happen, and uh, I encourage them. I think that's that's great. Um, I'm super focused on Tesla and SpaceX, and to, to you know, small amount on Solar City. So that that basically completely uses up my my brain. Um, and then, uh, uh, but but I hope I hope that something happens with the hype loop. And if, if nothing happens with it, then I, I mean I'll probably do something down the road and try to make it happen. And you said once you get Tesla to a certain point with an affordable car on the market, you're going to be ready for your next thing. What is the next thing? Well, no, I, I mean I, I'm always going to be involved with Tesla. I mean forever. Um, the only question is whether I will be CEO forever, or at least until I die. You know, um, so. Uh, I'm committed to be CEO of Tesla through volume production of the mass market vehicle, but I will continue to be involved uh, with Tesla as far into the future as I can possibly imagine. The only question is whether I will remain a CEO, say, five years from now. Um, that's the only question. Um, and yeah. as the ultimate disruptor, when you look at all the technologies out there, you've talked a little bit about artificial intelligence. What else do you think is really disruptive to the status quo right now? Well, writing genetics, rewriting human genetics, that would be quite disruptive. And are there any companies you'd point to that you think are doing a good job or leading the charge? I don't know much about that arena, um, except that if you ask what is, would be a very disruptive thing, I think that would be very disruptive. Um, I mean, at this point, uh, human lifespan is mostly about old age. It's not about... Uh, cancer or anything else. I mean, it's like if you cure cancer, I think like the average life expectancy would increase from like, like two years. You go from like 80 to 82 or something like that. It's um, we just we just have a, a genetic lifespan. It's kind of like the like say if you take like a like a fruit fly and, and, you, and you gave it the best exercise and diet possible and like the perfect life. It's still, you know, maybe it'll live like four weeks instead of three weeks. Um, you know, that genetics just drives a lot of these things. So uh, if, if for something to be truly disruptive on that front, um, you'd, you'd want to do something on genetics. I, but like I said, I, I don't have much uh, involvement there, um, or any involvement really. Uh, so. Talk about your time allocation. I think one of the things you spend an awful lot of time uh, thinking about, I know, uh, is uh, artificial intelligence. It's something that you and I have as a, a shared interest, and it's something that our audience is interested in as well. Um, the question here is a lot of experts in AI don't share the same level of concern that you do about the danger oh, of AI. Fools. What, what Famous last words. What, spe what specifically do you believe that they don't? Um, well, the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much smarter than we think we are, but much less smart, dumber than we think we are, um, by a lot. So, th this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence, and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. Um, I'm really quite close to, I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows, and the rate of improvement is exponential. Um, you can see this in things like AlphaGo, which went from, in the span of maybe six to nine months, it went from being unable to beat even a reasonably good Go player to then beating the European world champion who was ranked 600, then beating Lisa Doll 4-5, um, who had been world champion for many years, then beating the current world champion, then beating everyone while playing simultaneously. Then, uh, then there was Alpha Zero, uh, which crushed Alpha Go 100 to zero. <laughs> and Alpha Zero just learned by playing itself, and it, it can play basically any game that you put the rules in for. If you, whatever rules you give it, just, you literally read the rules, play the game, and be superhuman. Or any game. 
Um, nobody expected that rate of improvement. If you ask those, so, that those same experts uh, who think AI is not progressing at the rate that I'm saying, I think you will find that their predictions for things like Go and, and other, and, and other uh, AI advancements have, uh, their, their batting average is quite weak. It's not good. Um, the, the, we'll see this also with, uh, with self-driving. Uh, I think probably by end of next year, self-driving will be, will encompass essentially all modes of driving and be at least 100 to 200% um, safer than a person by the end of next year. We're talking like maybe 18 months from now. Um, uh, NHTSA did a study on, on Tesla's autopilot version one, which is relatively primitive, and found that it was a 45% reduction in highway accidents. And that's despite autopilot one being just version one. Um, version two, I think, will be at least two or three times better. That's the current version that's running right now. 